Okay, I'm thankful for all the time that we got to spend together as a family and that we were able to continue working during COVID. And I'm thankful, what am I thankful for? <laughs> I'm thankful uh, that my mom got better. Um, I'm thankful for her recovery and I'm thankful for my beautiful wife. Good morning, everyone. As I have thought about the last eight months of lockdown, I recall how initially it was a time of great uncertainty and a lot of anxiety. Change and the unknown are always challenging. Despite these challenges, there have been blessings as well. I've really missed the community of church and the feeling of connectedness to God and his people that communal worship provides. That being said, Colin and Lisa Clare have, through a lot of hard work and effort, ministered to us in new ways that we have all adapted to, and meaningful worship has continued. A big thank you to the two of them and their team. I'm grateful that my immediate family were all together at this time, although being in lockdown with three men has its own challenges. I am so grateful to be able to still be working from home where so many people have not been able to work at all and have lost their livelihood. I salute the patience of my colleagues as they have helped me to learn and adjust to new ways of working and communicating, Zoom calls, team meetings, etc. I'm grateful for technology that has given me access to new teachings, worship music that I didn't know before, online art lessons, and most of all, communication. I have been forced to slow down and recognize how stressed my busyness has made me. Lockdown has made me, has reminded me of the value of small things that are actually big things such as more time to reflect with God and to recognize my dependence on him, the anchor and the hope in my life. It's given me more family time. It's given me a slower pace of things. No more rushing in the mornings to get to work on time. It has just given me a time to breathe a little easier. I'm so grateful for my friends who have made the effort to keep in contact. Even when we have not been able to meet in person, we have found new ways of still connecting and spending time together. Thank you for this time to express my gratefulness and may you be blessed. Thank you. Amen. Hi, good day. This is Beverly. I'd like to say that I'm thankful for being safe during this epidemic, that I'm thankful for overcoming my fear of how this crisis would affect me. I'm thankful, very thankful for the technology that allowed me to receive God's word spoken to me every week. I'm thankful to all the people that were involved in sending those messages every week. They meant so much to me. I'm thankful for having people that cared and helped me during this time. And I'm thankful for constantly being challenged to change. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Hello everyone. My name is Bob. And on this Thanksgiving Sunday, I'd like to share some of my thankful thoughts. I'm thankful for this lovely church. I'm thankful for all the congregation, our friends. And I'd, I'm so grateful for the fact that we have the ability to pray for one another. I'm thankful for my family and the way God has worked his purpose out in my life. I'm thankful that God watched over me when I didn't know him. 
in those rebellious years. And he has forgiven me. I'm thankful that we can serve him by using our talents that he has given us for the good of others. I'm thankful for his wonderful grace and mercy. There are so many things to be thankful for. The list is absolutely endless. Thank you. Greetings. Our friend Irene Ross has asked me to record a Thanksgiving prayer on her behalf. The prayer is headed, Thank you, Lord. As I wake up this morning, the beating in my heart is the first miracle I experience from you. Thank you. I'm alive, healthy, loved, forgiven, and blessed. Thank you for protecting me, my family, and friends, and for providing all our needs. Thank you for all the blessings of today and for all the days. In the precious name of Jesus, Amen. I'm thankful for my family and the roof over my head. I'm thankful for my family because they love and care for me. And I'm also thankful for my pets because whenever I'm sad, they give me company. It's Nicole here. I'm grateful for so much for this year. Um, help and support of the church, support and love from friends, my job and acknowledgement I've received this year. And of course, um, I'm very grateful for my family's health through this uh, virus that we've been having. Greetings, everybody. It's so lovely to be amongst you all today as we give a Thanksgiving prayer to our Lord Jesus Christ. Just ask you to spend a few moments with me as Sarah and I, through a prayer, give thanks. Let us be quiet. Dear Gracious Father, Sir and I greet you today with grateful, happy and blessed hearts. Lord, what a year 2020 has turned out to be. Who could have predicted it? Sarah and I have really been tested by quite a few unforeseen and challenging events this year. We have lost some very dear to us and some have fallen ill. And the biggest challenge being COVID-19. As you know, Lord, these events have influenced and altered our lives in many ways, and maybe forever. There's only one thing that has not changed, and will forever challenge, influence, alter, and stabilize our lives. That is you, Lord. Father, you have granted us many positive, special, meaningful, life-changing, happy, as well as memorable happenings and influences during these trying times of 2020. Forgive us, Lord, as we so often fail to see our many blessings or gifts, then forget to give you all the praise and thanks. Father, we stand before you today not to ask for anything, but to humbly give you the thanks for everything you have done for us. Then, Lord, we give you thanks for your unconditional love, grace, mercy, good health, joy and peace every single day. Father, I'm truly grateful and humbled for your prodding, guidance, wisdom and shining light and finally giving me the courage to compile my weekly devotion. I dearly thank you for all those who take time to read this devotion and for their special and meaningful comments. This time spent with you, Lord, while preparing these devotions has been very special. Thank you. Father, you have blessed Sarah and I with very special children, family and friends. We give you thanks for each other. There is no bigger gift than your gift of new life, Lord. At 6.55am on Friday 13 November, weighing 3,6 kgs, you brought our first grandchild, Olivia Erna Anderson, into this world. Father, we give you thanks for this bundle of joy, and we are truly blessed. Thank you, Father, that you know us, you hear us, you shape us into what we are meant to be, and what you want us to be, and you see our tears. 
Lord, we thank you for healing. God bless our family and friends. Amen. This message is from Ruth Baker. Where do I begin but to say God is great? I sprained my wrist mid-August, and yes, it was in my garden, reflecting on my me time. Three weeks into the sprain, my hand was beginning to function normally again, or so I thought. Lying on my bed one evening, felt this terrible cramp in my arm, and my thumb was useless, with no movement, and panic station set in, not knowing what had happened. Long story short, Saw GP next day, being a Monday, only to inform me that my left thumb tendon snapped, and by Friday 4 September was in theatre, having a thumb tendon repair. I came out of the op with a splint. In the meantime, I had to close my grooming business. What a storm I was being challenged with, and my lefty out of action indefinitely. I was angry with God, and I felt I had just fallen into a bottomless pit, Asking, why me? Why me? Well, why not me? I realized I had a choice, and I either stand up and fight my storm head on with my God at my side, or wallow in self-pity. I realized God's telephone was never engaged, always open to guide me and remember the poem, the poem Footprints. He certainly carried me, and there was only one set of footprints. Along the journey of my storm, God sent me many angels to take care of me. Noreen, what would I have done without you? You were a pillar of strength for me, listening to my anxiety, sobs, and the unknown. And every dish had so much meaning to it. And thank you for organizing all my appointments. To Bob, Henry, Lynn, Sheila, you were all amazing, making sure I was picked up for my appointments. I could not have had it without you. One thing I have learned that it takes a storm to realize how blessed uh, uh, we are at Wesley to have such faithful, silent angels working for God. To my sister Heather, my son Sean, friends Wendy, Nola and Flory, my domestic, uh, Flory my domestic, thank you for all your kindness and help. I am now clipping again and had my final occupational therapy session today, Wednesday, and she is happy with the healing but have to continue with exercising every day for the next month or so. During my storm, a hailstorm delivered a double whammy. Three weeks after my op, Keith snapped his right distal bicep tendon and had an op on 28 September. He is in a brace until the beginning of December. He is healing well, and thank you for each and everyone for prayers for both of us. 2020 certainly has been a challenge, but whatever the challenges, God will carry you through them. I have come out of my storm with a rainbow and one word, faith. Hi, I'm Lisa Clare. I'm blessed and I'm thankful for my home, for the fact that I have a garden. So when we were in hard lockdown, I could be outside. I could, I could move to other rooms. Uh, the majority of folk couldn't do that and couldn't isolate and, and were stuck in, in one room places. And so I, I really am grateful for the home that I have for the way in which I have space uh, to enjoy things. And lockdown came and I realized how many of us needed a shutdown period. Not just our world, not just, uh, not just uh, nature that needed it, but how much we needed it to reconnect with ourselves, to reconnect with families, to actually spend time with one another. And so I am thankful for the things that I learned through lockdown, through, uh, through just my own company and things like that. Hello, everyone. I'm sure you can agree with me that this year has looked nothing like we imagined it to look. But for me, that is something I'm grateful for. This year was looking like one of the most stressful years. And I was just dreading it. This year is my final year, my fourth year in university, as well as working full time at the church. But instead of having all the stress and deadlines that I was dreading, I was instead put onto online lectures, online children's ministry, which as you can imagine, freed up a little bit more of my time. I was able to spend more time with my family, able to take a little bit more time for myself, something that I uh, never imagined doing this year, something I'm very, very grateful for. 
Another thing I'm so grateful for is the opportunity for my sister and her husband to be able to come back from the UK in December. Um, we haven't seen them obviously for the whole year and missing them terribly. So we're just so desperate for them to come home and finally the borders have opened so we're able to see them again at the end of the year. This is from Val Moor. Lord, we praise you and glorify you as the living God. We give thanks for your love and protection over us on that dreadful night of our home invasion in March. You are indeed the great I am. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> 